Okay, everybody, I was about to say welcome to a coffee chat, but this is not a coffee chat. This is an actual episode with the lovely Catherine Edwards. I'm so, so, so excited. First of all, how are you doing today, Catherine? I know we've been chatting for a long time. So I've been chatting for so long, and I'm doing really well. I'm not going to lie. Um, there's quite a few ups and downs at the moment. But the great thing is, and it's going to be covering some of what we're going to be talking about, it's like when those downs happen, have you got the resources or tools in your toolkit to deal with it? Have you got the resilience both in your physical and emotional and spiritual body to deal with it? So when we're doing with a lot of these things, it's not that we don't experience the same ups and downs as everyone else. It's like, what have you got that you can pull out there to help you get through those? Yes, absolutely. And I was to, I always say feel like it's so disingenuous because we are we're, we I do that with everyone. We like chit chat and talk, and then we go and we're like, "How are you doing?" We like, yeah, like, exactly. yeah. before. But uh, I was telling Catherine before we get into speaking of ups and downs. Before we get into the topic at hand, um, I, as you guys know, I posted on my community tab. <laughs> I've got Ravi over there snoring too. So you might hear a snore. He's a he's a big yeah, snore. No look snoring down there. I've got the fire. Yeah. <laughs> I this week has been rough for me because I have and, and Catherine, we've talked about this. Can we both struggle with ear problems? It's been something that I've dealt with my whole life. I've had since the, the moment I was born, just ear infection after ear infection. The canal in my ear is very small and shaped differently. Um, and so it it's hard for my ear to actually heal itself when things come in. And that's something I think we take for granted as human beings is that our body actually is constantly in a state of trying to heal itself and so what happened yesterday i had to put this we were supposed to do this video yesterday and i had to reschedule everything and next week's going to be a little bit um off of the regular schedule because i had to go i i absolutely had to go to the doctor yesterday it was not um we were talking about that it's, it wasn't i i literally had to go or my left ear drum was gonna there it was gonna be bad and I was telling Catherine, and I feel like I have to give credit where credit is due. And something you say a lot of times that I love is you can't tar everyone with the same feather. You can't judge one group of people just because a couple of them have done some some crappy stuff, right? And so, and I have been very hard on doctors, um, absolutely, R rightly so, because of the shit show we've lived through these last couple of years. And And going to the doctor, going to urgent care yesterday, I was very nervous about going because of the zapper de doo -dah, because of all that stuff that we've all lived through and when i got to this i went to an urgent care that i'd never gone to before my mother my ear was so bad yesterday that i could not drive myself um i was having a hard time with my equilibrium which i know Catherine can probably relate to when you, your ears are bad it puts your whole equilibrium off and so my mother had to drive down and actually pick me up and take me to urgent care and this urgent care I, it was north side urgent care on west peach street street here in midtown i'm gonna shout them out because i walked out of that urgent care yesterday and my faith in humanity had been restored I picked this urgent care. There's many, of course, in all the city, there's many around, but I picked it because their address was 1110 and I like the ones. So I was like, that's a God wink. I get to this urgent care and of course you have to fill out a bunch of paperwork. They were asking me all sorts of questions about the event that happened in 2020 and all the, the accessories we'll say with that event. And I was really nervous filling out this questionnaire. I was telling my mom, I was like, I just want my ears fixed. Like, I don't want to deal with this. I had a fever. I wasn't feeling what, you know, but I, I had, so I went back into the room after I filled my forms out, I went back into the patient room and I have to give those doctors such a shout out, the medical assistant and the doctor that saw me, I cannot remember their names because I probably, they probably told me about it. I just couldn't hear it because my ear was so bad. Um, not once did they, after I filled out my paperwork, not once did they bring up anything that had to do with the event of 2020, including the accessory, the, the zappity doo -dah. Um, And I, I am just, I was so grateful. They literally helped me with my issue. They used all natural products. They told me they were using natural products. Um, they were funny. They joked around with me about everything going on with my ear, you know, just had the best of bedside manners. And I have to shout them out. I, it made me very emotional. 
Um, they were cheaper than my regular doctor too. And I even laughed when I was leaving. I told the doctor, I was like, you know, I make standing appointments with my hairdresser. Should I just make a standing appointment with you guys for six months to come back for the same procedure? And she, you know, it was, it was, um, I told this medical assistant, I was like, when my ears started to immediately feel better, I was like, oh my God, you're doing the Lord's work. And then she walked in, she goes, so I hear we're, you're, we're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> yeah, they're just really funny. And I just really thought, you know, I want to look at more of my channel and a, a Dip, deeper looks at coercive control and what that looks like and I just have to say you know we know that no means no and I have to respect them because they saw my form that I said no and so they didn't bring it up they respected me enough as a human being and as a doctor she was doing she was doing no harm she was treating me for what I needed and I had said no on my forms and so she respected that and did not even bring it up and so I have to shout them out so all those people at Northside urgent care on West Peach Street in Midtown. Thank you guys for, for honoring your oaths as doctors and as nurses and as, and as medical assistants to, to really care for the patient where the parent and, and, and honor what the patient requests. So I have to shout as much as I have bashed the medical community. I have to, I have to give credit where credit is due because these people were amazing. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to know that there is a doctor very close to me that I can now go to if I need a doctor that's going to respect my rights. And so thank you guys so much at, at, at Northside. I feel fantastic today. I feel so much better than yesterday. So thank you guys. So, all right, now let's get to it. Now, Catherine, I told you that my, well, I'll say our viewers, because we share viewers, we, we share, all share community. We've been doing this shadow work challenge. And I had a viewer ask me to blog so they could see how I fit things in in a day. And the first vlog I did, I didn't really do a whole lot with Robbie with my dog because I was showing, you know, the shadow work. But the second time they wanted to see more about like walking Robbie and and how we feed Robbie. I did not show any of Robbie's diet on the vlog because I wanted to do a show with you because Catherine in Robbie's mind, Catherine is his girlfriend. <laughs> um, um, I don't, he's going to be very upset if he ever meets your husband. <laughs> he's got good but Mind you, he'd love my dogs. Lola's on the floor here. But I'll tell you what, he's so similar to mine in terms of, just see if I can see, show you Lola. Look, they're lying down. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it, it's so important, isn't it, that we give them what we want. And we've been working with Ravi... Since I first got to know you, really, we transitioned his diet across and we can have a chat about why that's so important. And it's so important. And so I wanted to I want I didn't want to do it justice of just showing us feeding Ravi because I wanted to really talk to Catherine about this. And actually, Catherine, I'm going to when we finish this video, I'm going to share it in the Telegram group. Enough is enough. Um, I did a three hour show with them on Thursday night and we talked a lot about you and about your diet plan because we talked a lot about uh, veganism, vegetarianism, and then also feeding animals. And um, and I said, I, I, I used you as an example. I said, ironically, you know, Catherine, my friend Catherine Edwards and I are both very, very staunch vegetarians, but Catherine's diet is full on what animals would eat in the wild. And and another guy, Michael, popped on and was talking about the GI tract, how the human GI tract actually matches more of that of the giraffe and the elephant, which are veg vegetarians. But the dog GI tract is a shorter tract that actually requires um, requires meat. And so with my dog, Ravi, um, I, I Catherine is his girlfriend and his dietitian now because it changed Robbie and especially in uh, Catherine's dogs or our rescues as well uh, street dogs you think about domesticated dogs they've come from a line of domestication where unfortunately their ancestors have been fed, fed kibble all that kind of stuff well Robbie his parents were on the street so yep. he now is eating like his parents ate but probably better nutrients because we're providing it for him versus him scrounging for what he can find and so Catherine let's first of all can we start how did you figure this out like i know you're we know you're a biologist but but at what point did you go wait a minute this isn't and listen like a lot of you guys like we were i i mean i was going to the whole food dog market i was buying the most expensive and he, robbie's always eating better than me like but it was just not able it was just not good for him and it, this diet has totally changed his personality his happiness level his health so first of all Catherine, at what point did you go and then we can get into the diet, but when did you yeah. go, wait a minute, 
this isn't this isn't a, as a biologist as a scientist when were you like this is not what's the evolution when did and when did you create this diet plan that's so in, incredible well thanks so much and I, I, this is my favorite 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 subject to talk about and why because everything we're going through on this spiritual journey in the spiritual war has been a war on humans and everything else in nature's um survival they're looking to make people fit uh, uh, unfit unhealthy dumbed down and unfortunately if we have animals in our care we are 100 percent responsible for the decisions they can't go and buy their own food they're we're responsible if we've got a dog in our lives if we're lucky enough to have a share a, with a dog but this applies to all species that are looked after by humans you know we choose what we feed them we choose what company they have what exercise they have the quality of the water the quality of the air how many of these things we're putting into them how many spot on poisons chemical wormers you name it and the, the i i was a biologist and i specialized in animal behavior and physiology i just love everything to do with animals but i did the whole range i did a lot of genetics and everything and i'm one of these people that loves education i love studying and i do a lot of my own studying like you do and i've had various different careers in different industries and then when my children were born so when my son was born sort of 23 years ago now just before he was born i was like i really want to get back into working with animals i'm passionate about it but i didn't want to do something that sticks a sticky plaster over the problem because what i was seeing at that stage i had a horse myself because i was working full time i didn't have dog and cats then but very soon got into having dog and cats but I've always grown up with loads of animals. And what I realized is that we'd gone so off course with the way that we humans look after animals and the decisions we're making for them is having such a disastrous effect on their physical and emotional health. So I went into a series which has never stopped of studying. So I trained first of all to be an animal iridologist. And an iridologist looks into the iris of the eyes the color part of the eyes and it's absolutely credible it's a very 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 ancient holistic form of of diagnosis now in today's world we're not allowed to call it diagnosis because only a medical doctor is allowed to diagnose but this has been iridology has been used at least since the ancient egyptians probably before and what it does is every bit of your eye corresponds to a part of your body and not only does it show inherited strengths and weaknesses it shows developing problems long before the symptoms manifest because by the time you see a symptom in any animal human or any other animal the problem's been there for a while it's just a symptom it's the tip of the iceberg that you're seeing so I studied to do animal iridology and I studied to be a herbalist and then I studied something called zoopharmacognosy, which is animal self-medicating, which I do want to mention more in a minute. I started light therapy, red light therapy, blue light therapy, which is basically acupuncture without needles, balancing out such a structural treats. My friend Danielle, who you're going to meet um, through the ASEA, she's just taken her dog for a red light therapy treatment and was just completely blown away with it animal communication and very importantly environmental enhancement so i know this is a long um answer but if all the challenges that we humans have faced our poor animals face too but the difference is as a humans there is some level of conscious choice in the choices we're making our animals unfortunately they're completely dependent on us to make the right decisions so i've been on this journey for about 25 years now I've also grown up with, you know, animals. My mother used a lot of ho homeopathy, really looked at nutrition seriously. But it doesn't matter how good you do everything else is, all the other healing modalities, if you're not putting the right nutrition into a human or an animal, that animal doesn't have the resilience. How much have you and I talked about resilience over the last few years? You've got emotional resilience, spiritual resilience, but you have to balance that with the physical resilience. And the problem is it doesn't, okay, anyone who's using supplements, you will, what they put on a packet, whether it's food or whether it's a supplement, is the ingredients that go into that. But it doesn't tell you the quality of the ingredients. It doesn't tell you the processing. So if you're buying a bag of kibble for your dog or cat, and it looks, you look through the ingredients list and it might choose someone that doesn't understand how a dog and cat needs to eat. And we'll come on to this in a minute. Look like the raw ingredients are OK. But if you think what you'd have to do to your roast dinner to turn your roast dinner into a hard brown ball that's stuck together. Yeah. 
it's the processing. So a long story about how did I get into it. I've been studying it for 25 years, ongoing process. And then probably about six years ago, I I got so fed up because my first and foremost, I'm a therapist working with people's animals and working with people and their health. So yes, you guys know me from doing my YouTube shows, but why I, I, I've been working holistically with humans and animals for years now. And um, I got so fed up with all my clients saying from all over the world, what can I feed my dog? What can I feed my cat? And I was like, there's nothing I can recommend that's good enough. So I then, long story, I won't bore you with the details, set up in Lithuania an organic raw air dry dog food company with a couple of friends, which was a really amazing product. And through that, I met my friend, Dr. Timo, and we then paired up together to put together the course on the dog and cat nutrition. And quite honestly, there's lots out there, but I'm, I am going to say my own child, it is the best one out there because when you understand um, – what not to do the choices get much so much easier and anyone who takes that course and it's only a couple of hours long you get lifelong access we're adding new modules to it you get pdf printouts with example recipes do's and don'ts what happens is it will teach you even if you're not going to at this stage make your own um and if you scroll down there it will show the courses then it will teach you what to look for when you're buying something because a um, little bit further down, uh, right, this one here, the raw, it, raw eye, eye um, for a healthier, happier right. dog. Oh, the cat. Here's the cat, here's the, the dog. Yeah. So, and we've made it re really, really cheap for the information you've got. You can ask questions as you go through because the thing is, so many problems that we have with our animals are diet related. Um, and most people don't understand, for example, that a dog's digestive system, yes, there's some similarities to human, but there's some very, very important differences in the stomach acid and the enzymes that it produces. So any commercial food, whether it's a tinned or a um, uh, kibble that we call the biscuit, the dry biscuit, you have to have a lot of, uh, um, it, yes, now I'm going to come on to that. I'll come on to my YouTube moment because there's so much free content I've put out there and I really encourage people to go and look at it. But when you start feeding your animals better, 90% of the problems will go away. So we've got loads of problems like cancer, skin problems, interestingly, Bryce, ear problems yeah. are one of the main problems that dogs and cats get and they're completely related to the gut microbiome. Yes, now, yes, there yes. are some other influencing factors, like you've got very small ear can, uh, canals, like I've got uh, ear loss, which the doctors call hereditary. That's another that's another discussion. But most of them, there's a huge, the huge link between the skin, the ears, the pores and the digestive microbiome and the toxins. If you imagine it's bad enough for us humans to get a good enough diet for ourselves these days because everything's full of glyphosate it's sprayed with toxins it's gmo you name it but you imagine what goes into the pet food it's the dregs of the dregs and even though they say human quality that means nothing that's no no guarantee for a standard whatsoever so i'm so passionate about it because you've seen even with ravi the difference changing a oh, diet made not just to physical but behavioral behavior it is and i will say too yes um and the symptom thing i mean i'll use myself as an example um and sometimes and i'm sure animals do this too um i had a very enlightening again conversation with the doctor yesterday and i you know she was like i noticed your nose is running she goes that's a symptom for you that your ear there's something going on with your ears and right. i've been complaining for a couple of years now i don't know why my nose is running but you get so used to feeling not feeling that great like i got so used to my ears not being that great that i wasn't noticing so the body will show you now with ravi i also that you talked about the eyes that also comes from Ayurveda as well. If you go, that's why I always say, if you want a proper dosha diagnosis, you need to see an Ayurvedic doctor because they're going to look deeply into your eyes. They're going to study your eye. They're going to look in your ears. They're going to look, look at your, your throat. And yes, and Ravi. So when, when Ravi came, 
for for a while, I thought that he was just adapting to being in the Western world because he was rescued from India. And of course, even as human beings, when we travel back and forth, the different there's different parasites. There's different you know your your body has to that's why I call it deli belly. Your body has to adapt. But it went on for a really long time, and he had horrible ear problems um at one point i rushed him to the emergency vet because his ear was so bad it was like hanging he had like eight different infections and mm. could not figure out why he his chest now he has very thin hair because he's from south india he's a very short haired dog and of course south india is very hot so i thought his bare chest was just part of he's the first dog i've ever had where i could actually see his belly button you know yeah. i thought that was just part of his his um lineage um and he he has he's had issues on leashes mm -hmm. and i just thought that that was because he's the first one of his line to actually have a leash and it was just him trying to adapt to being on a leash i never put two and two together because he's a very sweet dog he's a very excited dog he loves he, honestly he loves humans more than other dogs so um you know he flirts with girls like he's got a great sense of humor uh, he's a funny dog um but i could not figure out so all these things i was i was just i was just assuming was because of him immigrating over to the United States. That was kind of, and then when I met you, Catherine, and we totally changed his diet, he has completely changed. He's still a funny dog. He's still a smart dog. He's still a sensitive dog, but he's not, when we take, we take him out on the leash, he's not aggressive anymore when a dog passes. And you explained to me that, you know, first of all, him being on the leash, it's a restrictive feeling for him, you know, because he does come from the streets, right? So that's yeah. that wild animal in him that's still, but because his health wasn't at 100%, when another dog would pass, he had to kind of brussle up a little bit so that he wouldn't, because he knew the other dog could sense that maybe his health wasn't that great. And so it yeah. was like a survival. And the minute we changed his diet, he doesn't do that anymore. He's the good boy now. When we take him out on walks and other dogs bark at him and he just kind of looks at them and keeps on trying, we're like, Robin, you're the good boy now. Like, you're the one that's not. Adorable. And this is the thing. It's the other thing I love is animals. It's never too late. An animal will never turn around. I've got literally, they've all arrived now we're talking. I've got Coco down there, Pumpkin up there, Idris this there. Um, but the thing is, the beauty about the animals is they are the perfect example of teaching us, one, that you know, this knowledge doesn't lie. So when I'm working, trying out new supplements or or natural remedies or things like that, and we can talk about that more in another uh, chat. But the thing is with the animals, there's not a placebo. You know, Pumpkin's not sitting there saying, oh my goodness, thank goodness she's putting this gel on me because I know that's got good ingredients because I've read the bottle. <laughs> He's just like, it either works with him or it doesn't. And energetically it either does. So they're brilliant, brilliant feedback mechanisms for us. I love the placebo effect. Please don't get me wrong. I think it's one of God's greatest gifts. However, we also sometimes need to know whether something's really working or not. So when we when we educate ourselves more, and it's so brilliant to me because it's never too late to make a change. It doesn't matter what age your dog is. Cats are a little bit more tricky to transition normally because cats um, are slightly different in terms of They've got they they have to eat very fresh food because their stomach acid is different and they succumb to bacteria more and their sense of smell is so so powerful that they can smell the moment something's gone slightly off. So how pet food manufacturers get through this is putting strong chemicals in that sort of take away those senses. Um, but when you do transition your animal, the difference you'll notice, and what I love, Bryce, is when people normally do it for their animals first before they do it for themselves, and then when they see how much difference some of these things, these lifestyle changes can make to their animals, they'll start doing it to themselves. And with everything that's going on at the moment, it can be really, really hard for people. You know, you were bombarded with choo-choo, choo-choos and pollution and it's coming at us from all angles. And sometimes it can feel really, really overwhelming. But when you build that core resilience in your physical health, and we normally talk about the spiritual and emotional health, but when you do it with the physical health as well, it gives you this buffer for when things are thrown at you. Your bodies, our bodies, our animals' bodies are so brilliant at repairing themselves if we stop poisoning them. So a lot of the people are working with me. I do a sort of core wellness, first of all. We go through all the basics. 
teaching people how to stop putting all the nasty, awful chemicals in in the first place. And that also includes dog groomers, by the way. Um, and that isn't a go at dog groomers. It's that people don't know how much harm there is in a lot of these shampoos and products, but also how to put the right things. And it's a process of bringing, bringing the body back into balance and then you, how you can keep it there. Oh, yeah. I mean, Ravi, his, his coat, I've never seen his coat as thick and as fluffy as it is now. He's got ch like a true man. He's got chest hair now. Um, yeah. you know, and he, uh, we, he doesn't have to be bathed as often. And we, we do, we do like all natural, like, you know, we, when he's, when he gets, when he gets, he, he, he hates the B-A-T-H word, but you know, right. he's, I can't even, there is no way in hell we would ever go back to using kibble with Robbie again. It is night and day difference, just feeding in the, and the whole, like feeding him once a day too, right before dinner, oh, he's yes. sleeping. He would get up and I at first, so in India, the street dogs hunt in the really early morning hours. That's when they go and hunt. And so I was thinking that Ravi was getting up in the middle of the night and like scratching and running and walking around because of his natural need to hunt at that time. I didn't realize it was because of his diet. Now that we've changed his diet, he sleeps through the night. He I'm so pleased you brought up the one meal a day because this is so important for us. I'm really pleased you brought that. So when we're looking at, and, and this is where um, little knowledge is a dangerous thing almost, and you and I have talked about this in lots of the discoveries. That doesn't mean people can't start anywhere, but so many people say it's overwhelming with their own diet or with their animal's diet, and I get that. But if you then take a pause, take a deep breath, and go back to common sense. So I heard a really lovely, I listen to a lot of health related podcasts because it's the thing I'm most passionate about us taking our sovereignty back for our health, for us and anyone who's under our, you know, control, whether that's your children, your parents, your animals, etc. And, you know, when we look at highly processed food, you know, pe some people was, it's so common everywhere now, People don't really, it can be quite confusing what it is. So if you're eating something for, or if your animals are eating something that you couldn't prepare in your own kitchen, that's a big warning sign. If something's had to have, if you pick up a, a bag of food, whether it's for you or animals, and it's got, it lists the vitamin C level, the zinc level, the micronutrient level, that is a red warning flag because you can't pick up an apple and know how much vitamin C is in it because every animal apple is unique in terms yeah, of it. That's a really good point. Yeah. So if you pick up any packet, whether it's for your animal or yourself, and it's listing all those vitamins and minerals, you know that's a synthetic man made vitamin and mineral mix, and your body does not recognize itself. Now, we're talking about a lot of issues here. And on my YouTube channel, there is an animals playlist. And in that animals playlist, Dr. Timo and myself go through so much time. We've got videos on how to, we've got some of my own, you know, walking with the animals and things, some nice ones. But we've also got about um, how to feed your dogs healthily. We've got about water quality. We've got carbohydrates. We've got neutering. We've got immunizations. Um, sometimes, obviously, everyone watching this knows we have to be um careful about how we say things we've got how to root pet food navels we've got some stuff about guinea pigs i've got so much on there um that's free of charge so i would really really encourage people to go through and have a look about that playlist first and then you see here we've got how to make a homemade flea powder there um for cats and dogs which is 100 percent safe so what I would do is, as well as my courses, I've got loads more courses that I really, really am um, desperate to get up and running by. So I've got to give myself a naughty slap around the face and get on with them. But um, there's a lot of free content there as well. And then also I offer consults for people via Zoom or people locally in person. But the Zoom ones, we can do so much because a lot of people don't realise how damaging the heartworm treatments are, how damaging and, you know, my general point of thought is if you wouldn't do it to yourself, don't do it to your animal. So if we take something like heartworm, you know, yes, heartworm is a very serious condition and it's a risk, but we don't take heartworm tablets. Our dogs are at higher risk because they scavenge and eat snails and things like that. But what I teach people is how to educate themselves on the symptoms of heartworm so that if 
they display those symptoms, you can take early corrective action and get it sorted safely and treatly. Yeah. Because we don't go pumping ourselves full of wormers and flea treatments, things every as a preventative. So I am absolutely not against traditional veterinary medicine at all. It has its place, just like sometimes we need medical intervention. But the reason what my view is you go the holistic, least damaging route first, and then you cascade up if that's not enough. Absolutely. And it's so, so important we do this because when we look at the matrix we're all living in, if we don't educate on our, these basic principles, you know, anim humans are the only species on the whole of the planet that's forgotten how to feed ourselves. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing I was thinking as you're saying this, because I am very honest that I am not a cook. I, I'm not I'm not someone that is a foodie. I am a terrible cook. You know, I'm very aware of what I'm eating for for the for the because you know, the way you're feeding the dogs, it's very much in line with, with what Ayurveda says about human beings. You're Absolutely. listening to your symptoms, you're looking at the disposition, and you're countering because food is energy, the body is energy, and so you want to make sure you balance the energy. Um, but with that being said, with Robbie's diet, I can, I even I, even me, who uses my oven to store sweaters, um, can, can make his food. Now, my boyfriend loves to do it. That's his favorite thing to do, is to make Robbie's food. That's, he, he loves that. So he usually has taken that job over um with feeding and robbie knows when it's time because we we feed him around the same time every day so he will come and tell you like if yes. his if his if the meat is thawing um he will all of a sudden start like pacing and he'll come and like bop you and tell you it's it's time for him to eat um and and so and the hardest part was transitioning him off of the kibble to this because they obviously do the, do the dogs as humans would go through a detoxing phase they will go through a detoxing phase um ravi shed a lot of hair during that phase they look really skinny but then all of a sudden they turn around and i will say too ravi doesn't shed anymore like he used to he's not sh i mean of course we see dog hair around every now and then but it's not like it was like it used to be before we switched his diet that there would be like globs of dog hair just all over the house yeah we would vacuum all the time that doesn't happen anymore so that tells me that his system we only only a few pieces of hair here and there that his system is really healthy now and so it's not it's not shedding the hair but um because you are feeding basically you're and it's, it's interesting if anybody's ever been to like India or Mexico or any anywhere where they have street dogs, where they actually have like wild dogs. It's fascinating because this diet, I kid you not, in India, I res I, we, we rescue dogs, the dogs that are in bad, the dogs that are in good situations and in good neighborhoods and are, and are loved and safe, we leave them, they're happy. The ones who are in bad situations, those are the ones that we will rescue. But if you watch the street dogs and the way that they hunt and how they eat, it's identical to Catherine's diet plan. So they're, you're, you're eating, you're giving them what they intuitively would eat anyway. And they, yeah. as you see the dogs in India early in the morning, they will hunt the rats. Now the rats in India are like the size of cats. They're huge. Um, and they're kind of like the New York rats where they're not afraid of humans. They will literally yeah. like come up and punch you in the knee. You know, they don't run from you, but the dogs, they have these deep little creeks um, or tunnels. And in the early morning hours, you will see the dogs very quietly dive down into the tunnels to hunt the rats. And once they have a rat, which it's gross to watch, but they will literally eat every part of that rat. They don't take more than they need and they don't waste anything. Absolutely. And they're, and they, and so that's what you're doing. I mean, we, I always laugh because we're vegetarians, but our freezer looks like a serial killer lives here because it's all, it's all, we go to the yeah. market. We make sure we get very clean meat and, um, you know, it's, it's very fine chopped meat mixed with vegetables and that's Robbie's meal. And, we feed him now what works for Ravi, and this was your advice, Catherine, is because in the wild, this makes sense because of their digestive system. A lion is the same way, I know. They will eat, and then they'll need to go rest. This they is really, really important because a dog's pancreas works very, very differently to a human, so they cannot graze. Dogs can't graze, and it's a particular problem with people that have got small dogs that they'll leave a bowl of food down for them, and it, it causes so much problems. I mean, when I grew up as a child, you know, we I grew up with loads of dogs and you you never heard of dogs having pancreatitis and IBS. And now it's absolutely rife. And the worst thing is, is it's very hard to diagnose until it's got very serious. 
So most people don't even realize that a lot of the discomfort that their dogs are uh, cause is that. So in the course, we go through exactly why, because when you understand why, it makes sense. Why? And we're talking here about adult healthy dogs. If people's dogs have got or cats have got an existing health issue, that's not something we can cover in a generic course. And so that's why I do sort of consults. But the other issue that's not covered in the course at the moment, but we're doing a modules on, there's two that we're adding. One is on bones. Now, the reason we decided to leave the bones out of it in page one, excuse me for being rude, but people have a habit of doing silly things. So what we wanted to do is get everyone transitioned safely onto a raw diet. So there's some things in there that when you really know what you're doing, like garlics on the red list. Now, some dogs do very well with garlic. However, if you've got a dog and any dog who's been fed on kibble or cans will have with a compromised microbiome, then you can do quite a bit of damage with garlic. So what we've done is said this course as it is, is 100 percent safe. And then we'll add in the extra molecules. So we're going to do one on detoxing as well, because obviously a lot of our meats now and vegetables are full of glyphosate and pesticides and herbicides and antibiotics. And now we know other things as well, what they're doing to the animals. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff in there. But what I would say to people is the most important thing is to not blame yourself for the decisions you've made for your animals, because all of us, anyone who's got an animal in their life is loves them to bits and is desperate to do the right thing by them and we have been fooled just like we've been fooled for our own health and choices we have been very much fooled by our animals and and virtually every veterinary degree in the united states in the uk and europe is sponsored by the pharmaceutical companies so that tells you all you need to know so a vet is not trained in animal nutrition they're trained in the basics of the digestive tract but they're not trained uh, just like our doctors are not trained about how to we can eat for health. They're trained about how to treat disease. So let's not shoot the messages in terms of that. So once you realize you think, oh, my goodness, OK, I would not be fooled. It's not a single human here that thinks they could eat the same meal every day of their life and be healthy. Right. So, and cats and dogs need variety in their diet as much as we do. So you cannot feed the same food or the same recipe every day and be healthy. There are times when you might do it to treat a certain condition short term, but not long term. So all these things are covered. But the most important thing is your animal will thank you for it. They're not going to sit there and say, well, I wish you'd done this five years ago. And don't blame yourself, because if we've like most people didn't think about giving these annually to their dogs and cats and horses and rabbits. But now with what's gone on for the last few years, people are thinking, oh, my goodness. And then right. people yep. start yep. thinking, OK, well, what's on this spot on treatment? I'm putting it behind the thing. So it says I mustn't touch it and seek medical advice immediately, but I'm putting it on my dog's skin. You know, so don't blame yourself for not asking the questions. It's like you and I say, once that light bulb moment goes off, then you can choose to do something about it. You don't need to worry about the past. That was yesterday. Your animals will just thank you for any little step in the right direction you make for today. It'll, of course, correct everything. I know my mother has a King Charles Cavalier dog, um, very small dog, uh, very, very, you know, a lot of these domesticated dogs are very inbred and so they yeah. have some of the issues and so i was talking and maggie my mu princess margaret is her name but they call her maggie um we, we um she grew, i always i always remind her even though they're famous because they're they're from the royal family that that dog was born in kentucky she's no princess but, <laughs> but uh, we go, maggie and maggie is only a couple years older than robbie and she's already starting to show signs of like aging and yeah. so i've been trying to talk my mom into doing this diet um with Maggie, because I think it will help a lot of her knee issues, her hip issues you know, just from the end. She is a small dog um, and she is um, she does graze. Uh, she loves her food. And my mother always says Maggie's like me. She loves her food, you know, but but that's but but that's the thing, too, is like, you know, human. You think about human beings. A lot of times human beings, we eat to cover emotions. We eat because we're bored. Dogs don't do that. Dogs don't naturally do that. They they just really eat when they're hungry, when they need. But, but they will if they're fed the wrong things. So yes. it's like if you feed a child chicken nuggets and crisps, 
there's no nutrient value in there so their body their their physiological systems don't switch off the brain so there's two ways that your body tells you they're full there's how full your stomach is but there's also the messages that come from your microbiome that tells you have you got all the nutrients you yes. need so no dog in the wild would ever graze it, it no. just wouldn't be able to they eat a big meal they swallow it all down, they sick up the fur and the bits that they can't digest, and then they rest and sleep it off. So their pancreas works very quickly for a short period of time, job done. Now, when dogs graze, we are literally killing them with kindness. And the only reason, and it's not people's fault because they don't know, no one's ever taught them this, but it's so dangerous because it upsets every system in the body. And the reason the dog's grazing is one, often boredom, and two, because it's not getting the nutrients. So it's constantly searching, searching. So one thing I would say is if your dog or cat or horse or guinea pig or whatever has got existing issues, then you'll need a consult with a qualified holistic practitioner to say, right, how do we get the body back into balance because you'll often need to use some supplements with that as well then once you've got the body back in balance then it's very easy to keep it there yeah it's it's i'm just telling you guys it is literally i will never buy another bag of kibble again as long as long as i live because i have seen just such a remarkable change ravi is so much happier just his mood he's so much more relaxed um with this diet and it is of course i don't want to go into everything because you are going to have to again, go through a transitional period which Catherine's course will walk you through and Catherine will walk you through because they are going to have to detox and that yes. and that there are there are going to be that's going to be really hard to watch your dog go through like a detoxing period i know but but once you get through that and you're on it's so easy now and because it's raw guys it's all raw it's raw meats it's raw uh vegetables everything mixed together the first time we gave robbie raw chicken we were both like, like <laughs> just like me too but i said i'm going to coco's down here in pumpkins there and I said I should be calling them both Hannibal because their favorite thing is raw liver. Now, the course will teach you how much raw liver is yeah. safe because there's different nutrients in different parts of the meats. So you can have too much of a bad, good thing as well. Yeah. But I will do so. I'm going to work out now. Bryce has given me a kick up outside to do some more vlogs on feeding the animals, the things, the walking, etc. Because that's my other passion is exercise, the right species appropriate exercise. But I love it because I we haven't had one dog that hasn't successfully transitioned. Cats can be a little bit more tricky and they'll get there, but owners need to persevere because cats, once their taste buds have set, it can be some of them quite tricky. Again, they will all persevere, but some of them can take a bit longer. But what the course tells you how to do is how to transition safely because yeah. you don't want to go cold turkey normally no. because the microbiome has got to have a chance to adjust. But yeah, Bryce, yeah. isn't it easy now? Now you've so, done it. It's so easy now. I mean, yeah, and that's and, and you'll go through the course, guys, because there's going to be, if I remember correctly, like times where you give them kibble and cooked meat, and then you slowly. I mean, Catherine will go through all of that with you. There is a a transition. It's not just like one day they have kibble, the next day they're eating raw chicken and carrots. It's yeah. it's it's very much a transition, and it's 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 it, you you and it, you really show it shows your love of your dog to like really walk them through that transition it's kind of like I remember when your parents disciplined you as a child be like this hurts it's gonna hurt me than it more than it hurts you you know and there is a learning I mean you have to learn because just like yeah. human beings every animal is going to be a little bit different and so with Ravi it's definitely there was a learning when, when we got him on all raw it was like trying to learn like I remember one time I had to call you because he was throwing up a lot and we figured out it was something was too rich for him. We had to pull it back a little bit and then it, it fixed everything. It wasn't too rich. It was two things. That's a brilliant point you brought up there. So you will have to experiment with the size of the dog and the type of dog about how big a chunks to give them. So one of them is that the dogs have a very strong gag reflex because their digestive system is designed to swallow it all because otherwise the other pack members get it. And then they're designed to sick up the bits that they haven't digested. So some dogs, like my Labrador star who we lost last year, she would inhale something whole. And so you had to sort of cut hers up smaller because she was such a piggy. Well, these two, bear, even bear in mind they're street dogs, they're much more delicate and they don't like the big lumps, but also it's the temperature. So one of the things that was causing him to be sick was it was too cold. So when you take stuff straight from the fridge, you know what it's like when you have some cold ice cream hit the stomach, it can trigger a gag response. 
So obviously in the wild, they'd be eating body temperature yeah. Yeah. Right, on animals. So, or if it's if they're scavenging off dead meat, sometimes they would be eating frozen if they live somewhere really cold and it's snowing. But a lot of the time, it would be body temperature. So sometimes you just put a little bit of warm water just to bring it back up to body temperature. Yeah. So you, you, it's such a good point you raised. Everyone, it's just like us. They will have personal preferences of temperature, of texture, just like we do. Um, and that's such fun because hasn't it strengthened your bond even closer? Oh, yeah, I know. We know exactly what Robbie's favorite meat is. We know mm. exactly what, what type. And there's certain vegetables that raw vegetables we've tried to, I've yes. tried in the past, I've tried to feed him and he won't eat it, but he'll eat it if it's cut up real fine and mixed. He loves it then. And so, um, and it's, it's, and the cutting it up really small too helped. And we put a little bit of warm water on it sometimes. And, and he's funny too. He eats very slowly unless he thinks I'm going to get his food. So that's the yeah. funny thing is, um, is because my boyfriend will, my boyfriend's a cook as well. He's a chef, and um, I, I'm not. He, he, he's used to wooing women with food, and that was not something he could do with me. So now he gets to do that with, their, with the dog, with Robbie. He gets to woo Robbie with his raw meat. <laughs> And even though I'm a vegan, I love preparing my dog and cat's food and my guinea pig's food and my horses. And I'll tell you why I love it. Not because I love, I mean, obviously I love all animals. So there is uh, an ethical conflict there for me. But I've got these rescue animals in my life. So it's my job as their mum to do the best job possible. So when I'm putting something out there that's as healthy as I can do, I feel it gives me as much pleasure as it gives them and you know Indy the one on the sofa so Lola's always really liked her vegetables but Indy hated vegetables initially but now she'll eat them so I took you I neutra bullet them up and now she loves the vegetables but I had to go very very slowly well everyone who's got children know that you might have two or three children they don't all eat the same no. you know what you did what worked with one baby doesn't work with another and it's such fun having that yeah. relationship and for me, Bryce, also for my own cooking, um, you know, I went through a stage when I was younger and I was working all the time and I'd eat a lot of convenience foods. But now I'm really getting the passion back for home preparing because yeah. if anything the last few years has taught me, it's taught me what's really important in yeah. life. It's, um, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's so important. And I, and again, guys, even, even though uh, my boyfriend does the, the, the food for Robbie, cause he enjoys it. That's what that's that he's a cook. He enjoys like experimenting. That's something he really likes to do with Robbie is experiment with different, different types of foods. But if, if he's not here, I can do it. That's how easy it is. Once it's literally, once you get over the whole, it's, it's, I mean, like I said, the first time that Robbie ate chicken completely raw, both of us were like, like we just like we're waiting for something you know but that just shows you the difference and he loves chicken that's something he loves um is is chicken and and the fasting too fasting them once once a month robbie's yeah. to the point where he kind of tells us when it's time to fast like you can kind of see it where it's time where maybe he is maybe he throws up or maybe and it's like okay this must be the time of month where we need to kind of fast him and it, it, it the next day he's fine it gives yeah. his stomach a chance to um the self medicating. That's something that Robbie has done since the. I can't since wait the to talk about that more. It's so amazing. Letting them, and that's the thing with Robbie, especially or, or any dogs, especially dogs who are rescued from the streets. They're not stupid. Yeah, they're not going to eat things that are going to hurt I them. Do the yeah, they um like in in Florida he runs around and there's in the backyard in Florida at the property in Florida there are some some plants that are could be poisonous mm -hmm. and we'll we'll keep an eye on it. Everybody keeps an eye on it when he's in the back, but he won't go near them. No, mine are exactly no. the same. The only time animals that there's another I know I'm diverging off a lot, but animals have got an innate ability unless we've taken that sense away from them and a lot of our um innate ability to self-select things that are safe for them to know what to eat and not what to comes from the health of your microbiome so the healthier your microbiome the better decisions you make as a human and as an animal and i never i worry that mine are ever ever going to eat poisonous plants as long as they've got choice it's the same with horses if you shove your horses in a little starvation paddock and there's something poisonous in there, they'll be forced to eat it. If they can choose, they'll always avoid it. I know it's a complicated subject, and if people are interested, let us know, and we can come back and do more about this. Um, but all I would say to people is 
my messages are please please if you've got an animal of whatever species look into this yes but you will transform there's a reason why our animals are getting all these diseases that they're never used to there's a reason why the life expectancy for every domestic animal has gone down dramatically you know people think that it's good if your labrador gets to 12 now a labrador should be living to 20. oh in the, in the early in the early this gets me the early 1900s a lab would live between 20 and 25 years old exactly and that was normal and they were eating table scraps and things and trust me when i first did it so my husband when he i was first sorry i've got light shining my when my husband was first learning how to do this it's like learning when you learn any new skill you know he was getting the bit of paper looking at weighing things out looking at it because that's just when you're learning now i don't i just shove it all in i've got five cats two dogs did have three dogs all quite big and i can prepare if i want to all their meals for the whole week in less than an hour if I want to prepare them in advance and freeze them. Now, what I do, and in practice, I do it more or less every day because that's the routine I've got into. But this is not majorly time consuming. When you're learning, you'll be a little bit awkward or a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But it's not an exact science. We don't measure our fruit, our fit plates out and say, oh, how much of this? If, you're, if your dog's too fat, it needs less food and more exercise. So, you know, when we give feeding guidelines, it's just a guideline. I have no idea how many calories I eat in a day. I know you're Vata, so you need to look into that more. I love my food. <laughs> I have the opposite. I, I I love my food. I'm not a big person at all because I do so much exercise. But if I didn't do the amount of exercise I did, I would have to monitor what I ate because I love food. Well, that's funny, too, because I was looking up, somebody asked me a while ago, do animals have doshas as well? And I assume they did, but I just looked it up just to make sure. And yeah, Ravi, my dog, is very vata, just like myself. And so he's very lanky. He's very long. He's naturally thin, um, which I think, you know, they're just very, he's very flexible, which that's that diving into the tunnels that his ancestors did. So he's very flexible. Um, and he does have the propensity to get skinnier. And actually, it's funny you say that because we just this week upped Robbie's food and take a little bit because we noticed that he was maybe getting a he still looked healthy but he was skinny and so we we're like you know let's just up and guess what guys sleeping better and this is what i want people to do so this we have been taught that you know oh a labrador should be this way well no there's so many there's big bone labradors there's small bone labradors yeah. there's working labradors there's show labradors completely different that's like saying everyone who's five foot six like me should be the same weight no we or shouldn't like all white people Muscles. should be the same all black people yeah. should be no yeah no yes <laughs> but also any time you're feeding whether you're feeding yourself or for packet the guidelines are just the guidelines. I've got friends, I literally eat two or three times the amount of food that they do, and I'm skinnier than them. And that's just because we've got different constitution types, we've got different health challenges, our microbiome's in different states, we do completely different levels of exercise. So you have to use common sense. I've never weighed any of my food in my life. If I can't get into my genes, I know I need to eat less. <laughs> If I can get into my jeans and they're a bit baggy, I know I need to eat a bit more. You know, we it's a guideline and an animal in the wild doesn't go out and say, like, if you take rabbits, not every rabbit is the same. You've got big bunnies and little bunnies, you know, and, the, and this is what I would do. It's like, I know it seems overwhelming sometimes with ourselves, with all the different diets, with this. But when you take it right back to principle, does it look like real food? So for someone my age... The thing I was always taught, if it's not something your grandma wouldn't eat, it's not real food. And secondly, you know, we don't need to be told if we're too fat or too thin or and if our dogs are. The thing is, what we've done is we've normalized overweight animals. We've normalized overweight people. It's not criticism. We all go through stages like that, or some of us do, apart from Bryce. But <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like we have to be honest about our health. And animals in the wild are not overweight. The ones that swell a lot in the winter, like the grazing animals, that's because they're really going to be in a famine state in the winter. Yeah. 
Well, I will say too that even the underweight thing for vata is my I have the propensity to not eat and to get under and it's it's just as dangerous. And that's Ravi yes. as well. And so when I recognize oh Ra and, and Ravi's behavior, he is totally vata. Like he can't catch a ball to save his life. He's clumsy. He but he runs real fast. And that's yeah. the thing too, is like and I remember when so with Ravi went to get the dogs into the United States, they have to go through a certain amount of zapper de doodahs in order. But then after that it's done once they're through for their passport. And actually the veterinarian I work with in India, I love him. He's amazing. I won't say his name because he will do, th he will, you know, fight the system in his own way to make sure these dogs are, are rescued. Um, even lying about their age to make sure they can get through. Um, but, but Ravi, he's also, Ravi can run faster than any dog I have ever he can flat out run and I remember we, we first got him to the United States because my dad my dad is a veterinarian and my dad looked at Robbie and could not get over the amount of muscle tone that he had mm -hmm. so what does that tell you he's he is conditioned to do a lot of exercise and so we try he and thank god my boyfriend will do that we'll take him out on a five mile walk every day just to make sure he is you know, it's good for us too, but it's actually the veterinarian I work with in India. He has the funniest poster in his, in his clinic. It says, um, if your dog's overweight, you're not getting enough exercise. Is exactly. <laughs> this is absolutely true. It's a really important thing. And we can, if people are interested in this, let us know and we can cover this another time. And this is not about beating ourselves up. Like it's not like I'll go through stages with my own dark where sometimes I'm absolutely brilliant and then I'll have a stressy few weeks and I won't be so good and I'll make bad choices. We're not aiming for perfection here, folks. We are not aiming for perfection. Um, but it is really true. So my dogs, I, I know you can't really see them sort of lying down here, but you'll see some pictures of them on my YouTube and on my Instagram and things um because i love to take pictures of them but they're the fittest dogs i've ever had because street dogs they don't survive unless they're really fit and healthy and as strong as it is literally survival of the fittest yeah. but they need a two-hour walk every day so i've got a lot of land here so they run around the paddocks and everything i have to be careful when the foxes and pheasants and badgers are out but i will make time and i will do a vlog of it of an an hour and a half fast you know long walk through the heathland and everything every day because i know that the decisions bryce you and i have said so many times on our coffee chats make the decisions today that your future self will thank you for and with our animals i know that they need that for their muscle tone for old age and keep their joints healthy so the decisions i'm making now now they're probably somewhere between five and six obviously we don't know exactly are going to set them up well or badly for their old age um and if you have got a dog that hasn't had much exercise dr peter devas there's a beautiful interview on my channel with dr peter devas he's amazing and you know you said you know a half hour walk is not a walk for a dog it's a wee stop but if that's all you can do now then just sort of say okay let me look at my schedule for the next few weeks how can i just make gradual improvements so it's not about concentrating what you can't do i've worked with so many clients that work full time so we've ended up getting local trustworthy teenagers in the neighborhood who want i was to about to say that's an option too and i've said that there are if you can afford it and there are dog walkers there's tons in atlanta you said yeah, we get the quality of them really yeah. quality and I'm not the about person. professional qualifications i'm talking about common sense but there's some yeah. really good people out there there are tons of teenagers I mean, that you could pay them 10 bucks to go take your dog out and your dog will love it. Your dog will be so happy just to be out with somebody, you know, um, I, I, whenever, so I've told you guys this before, Ravi, he's so smart because he's a street dog. I think street dogs are just have to be smart and he kisses, he'll give you kisses, which is not a lick. So we figured out that he like, I'll kiss him, you know, he feels the pressure and he knows that's a sign of love. And so he'll take his snout and push it into you. And he does that when, when, when you take him on a walk, you'll get like five to 10 kisses. Like yeah. all of a sudden he'll just look at you and just kiss you, you know? And my friend, Mark, uh, who I rescue dogs with, he lives up in uh, Ohio. Whenever we're out of town, he'll come and we much rather would leave Ravi with a friend yes. in his own house than, than with a, a, a kennel. Um, I just, yeah. Yeah. Bars and kennels. Well, yeah. One, I got too many animals and the cats would escape as they have if you could see pumpkin up there but equally they'd be so traumatized we couldn't oh yeah 
No, oh, it's so it's quite a few of my clients have got elderly people that will come out and walk their dogs and they love it. It's a win win. Or if you're going to be out for a period of day, I've got um, elderly neighbours that will come and just sit. I mean, I'm lucky I've got a big garden that's safely fenced. So they'll come and they'll come and sit here and I'll pay them to come and they don't want pain, but I insist. But you do, so they love it and they'll come and make themselves a cup of tea. I always leave a nice cake for them and they'll sit whilst the dogs have a good play. So there's always something you can do and it builds a lot of community. I've got a lot of clients that have got elderly neighbours that are absolutely delighted and don't even want paying for it to be. And they're very sensible. So, you know, you can vet someone and you can say whether you want them kept on the lead or not and things like this. So, you know, you can do it in a way that you feel comfortable that your dog's going to be saved. But a lot of these elderly people, they are so happy to be asked, Bryce. You know, it's so funny. My boyfriend's mother, her favorite thing to do is to take Robbie on a walk. Exactly. That's her favorite thing to do. She loves it. She loves it. Um, and she's in her 70s, but that's her favorite thing to do is to take him out. Um, and so, yeah, you're right. There's so many people that of all demographics that would be more than happy to come help you with your animals. And animals are healing for them as well. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a real win-win situation. It's beautiful. We've talked a lot about how people love to be love to help it's human's nature we all want to help in some way and share our gifts so don't be afraid to ask because your animals will thank you for it but i bet you the human will thank you for it yeah. too and we have students so like we have students that can walk ravi um yes. my, my, my friend mark was down here he couldn't he was hysterically laughing at ravi kissing ravi kissing him and like staring up at him like he was you know so people love it you know and that's and yeah he i absolutely where, where there's a will there's a way you know yeah. for us, the one thing that it's problem with ravi is because ravi's from south india even though he did not live he was rescued long before he was a puppy he could have ever experienced a monsoon season the only thing that struggle struggle for him is when it rains we have a hard time getting him to go outside because he's terrified of the rain because even though he never lived through a monsoon it's in his dna to Absolutely. understand uh, to, to be to understand rain could be dangerous that's the only time so i want to reiterate that even though ideally he gets five miles a day um when it's raining sometimes that doesn't happen no because... quick one stop and we don't need it every day just like yeah. you i watched your vlog that you did and you know when you're on your cycle you like i don't feel like it so with mine there will be times when they don't because either for circumstances for them or for for me so we're not aiming for perfection but we're just saying in general but then there'll be other times where they need to actually rest you know you can always guarantee a dog will lick their gut bottom on camera <laughs> Um, but this is the thing is it that when there, there's no sort of set regiment, you, you there will always be times when you can't do that. Like with mine, I have to be very careful who else takes them out because India will chase a deer. And we've got so and I went on a walk this morning. I saw eight wild deer all running off through the heath in different directions and she will chase them and her recall is selective. Um, but Lola, bless her. You know, when I had two Labradors, I could ride my horse and just have the dogs coming along beside because they were so well trained. These dogs have uh, got much more of their natural instinct. And Lola does have a bit of fear and aggression, and I've worked really hard on it. But therefore, I will only let people walk Lola that are competent and understand how to put her at ease because she's just nervous of some other yeah. dogs. So they'll come and leap on her. Because every these are real living animals. We don't aim for perfection, you know. And this is the thing. They're all individually and unique. But... All I can say, there's not a single person that when they start looking into what chemicals are I putting in them, what diet, what exercise, what play, whether are they on a harness rather than a lead, you know, all these different things, it's so rewarding because they give so much back to you, don't they? Yeah. Oh, it's I, I just can't. I'm so glad we got to do this because I am just in awe of how much this has changed Robbie. And of course, I mean, I would take a bullet for my dog. Like I would give my life for my dog. That's he's. He's he and I, I agree with you, Catherine. They're not pets. They're literally part. Of, they're they're an equal member of your family, you mm -hmm. know. And so and and um, I, I was thinking too. Like I would love to continue this, but I want to know. I mean, obviously, you guys, you guys can look at Catherine's course. Part of there's a couple of prizes for the shadow work, which are Catherine's courses. Um, so 
But, you know, any reasonable questions that you have about this, if there's something you're confused and you just kind of want some clarity, ask us in the comment section below. Um, I know, Catherine, um, do you have, I was thinking about this, do you have, there's a group, do you have like a signal support group or telegram support group for people that are doing this with their animals to like bounce questions off of each other or? I have got a Catherine Edwards Health telegram channel, which tends to be more human related questions. But to be honest, I find it really, really hard to keep up with all the, you know, I've got Instagram, I've got the Twitter, I've got this. So it's hard, guys. <laughs> Yeah. So the main thing I would say is equally, I get probably about 10 emails a day where people say my cat's got cancer. I've got this, I've got that. And th those questions are never a simple email or yeah. things. If you or your animal have got a serious health condition, then we need to go as a consult because it would be irresponsible of me to say, just give them this or just do that and i need a lot of information because some natural products can be really dangerous in the wrong hands that's why yeah. i have a big problem with anyone saying they're spraying hydroxychloroquine from the chemtrails because it's ridiculous it makes no sense at all um but if it's simple questions i will keep an eye on this one if people do and also i'd love people to know would they like to know more would they like us to do some more of this um and then um obviously you can email me as well so if it's a simple question you can email me but i would say look at the animals playlist first if it is as i said it's really heartbreaking for me that people sort of say you know classic one i get is my dog my cat you know it's got cancer what can i give it and it's there's never one supplement that you can give it's a it's a holistic lifestyle plan whether it's a human or whether it's an animal because yeah. anyone who's giving an off the com answer like that is is just fooling you, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I would suggest, that. and it's the same for humans too. I mean, think about we're all we're all very we're all very alike, but also very different, yeah. and so everybody's going to respond differently to different. Even in the homeopathic world, which is why I love the Ayurveda, because the Ayurveda says that that not not you know that's what I see a lot on my channel. People are like all obsessed with coconut oil in america right now well coconut oil is great for kapas and pittas it's deadly for vatas so exactly. even though it's and natural it's not so the same thing for animals it's not going to yeah, be so for example you know this is the problem is animals i know we're going on a bit so i won't go for too much longer but animals bearing in mind they are still even if they're bred in captivity and even if they're a highly bred species of cat or dog or something they still have much more of their natural instincts and intuition than most of us humans do. It's a fact. And that's why they're so beautiful to share our life with them. But even if, if you're a dog and you're a pack animal, or if you're a horse and you're a prey animal, your survival depends on you not showing your weakness. So if you're a pack animal, like a dog, and you're weak, then the rest of the pack will drive you out to die on your own because you will bring the whole pack into danger. If you're a herbivore and you're in, you know, weak or you're unwell or you've injured yourself, the prey will see that and you'll be the one they'll go for. So bearing in mind, a lot of us humans, it's not our fault. We don't notice our animals have problems until the symptoms have had to get pretty extreme. So therefore, if someone's promising you a quick fix and do this, it's really important. If you've got an animal that's sick, you have to transition very carefully, whether it's diet, whether it's detoxing, whether it's thing, because you always do no more harm. You're looking yeah. to support the animal first. And so, um, but, you know, generally speaking, most people with their animals can transition really safely. Oh, it, yeah. It, well, every, every animal could. There's never a case where kibble is good for your cat or dog. Never. I don't care if they've got kidney disease or if this. It's never good for them. That's like saying there's any health condition that McDonald's is good for. It doesn't exist. So I think, you know, that's my main mission for you today. And just be prepared for, you know, to watch your dog and cat detox. Because that, that was harder to see Ravi get skinny, really skinny, and then lose his hair. And then all this, but all of a sudden, like overnight, he just, it, it took a turn. And so he, he, got, he got, and I will never, like I, this is the one thing, I mean, your diet plan, I will absolutely like future animals that come into this house will immediately be put on Catherine's diet plan. Like it's just it, not even a question. Any, I mean, it's just never gonna even even when I travel, I don't just grab a little bag of kibble. I we I prepare a meal to if 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 he if we have to spend the night somewhere like at a hotel, 
there is a meal for Robbie already prepared prepared for his dinner that night. So yeah, it's easy. If you had a baby, you know, yeah. all of us have babies. You knew you had to take the baby food with you because you weren't necessarily going to be able to get some. But yeah. you know, it is little steps. Do what you can. Concentrate on what you can do, not what you can't. And there's loads of studies that show even adding a little fresh food to the diet will make a huge difference. So I promise you, there's no one that is going to be in a position that you can't afford this. You can, you absolutely can. It's Home the same prepared is always more cost effective than shop bought. And I, I will say that the amount of money spent on Ravi's food now is really kind of the same as we were spending yeah. on the expensive kibble, but the amount of money we're saving by not having to take it to the emergency vet as often as maybe you know so you have to kind of look at it that way too you're investing in the health in the longevity of of the dog which you want i mean i've already told robbie he, he he's not allowed to die like he's not allowed to so so if there is a med bed he's going to be put in it not me i'm just going to keep med bedding him so, yeah. um, so. And, and it's so resilient and they're so grateful and it's never never too late to start and you know if you've got any questions reach out yeah. but enjoy it enjoy it enjoy the passion because i promise you you'll get far more positive feedback from changing your pet start than you will from your husband's. <laughs> so it's really <laughs> worth it. Put your energy there first. Listen, put your husband and put your dog in the trunk of your car for a couple of days, open that trunk up and see which one's glad to see you. So <laughs> exactly. Thank you. I know we're, I think we're going to do a coffee chat on, on my channel this week. Correct. So maybe yes. We'll see. We'll see what you guys have to say. Maybe this coffee chat could be like a Q and A, rounding up everything you guys. Any questions you guys have? I know it's always hard when because we've been. I've been doing this with Robbie for over a year now. You've been doing this for twenty five years. So if there's something that you're confused about that didn't make sense, just let us know in the comment section below, guys. Because this is really important. Food is energy. Our bodies are energy, regardless of what species the soul is in. It, it needs to balance it. And so um, help matrix because it, it's an evil plan, what they've done to us with our food and therefore what they've done with our animals food. So, you know, vote with your dollars. Don't take your power back. Yeah, stick it to the man and take care of that. We it, it, dogs are dogs are God spelled backwards. So you know it's it's um they are there's no animal that will love you more than that dog. So so love that dog back in return. Um, know that unconditional love. So anyway, so, all right, you guys. Well, um, yeah. Thank you, Catherine. Love you guys. Love you, Catherine. Give your animals a Thursday. Yes, and I will put all of Catherine's links. I know I shared them on the episode, but they will also be down in the description box below. So you can just go click on the links in the description box to take you directly to Catherine's website so you can read through this for yourself um, and then ask questions. So, all right, you guys, we'll talk to you soon, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. So we've got animal feeding time here. So this is the dog's dinner, Indy and Lola. So what they have got is minced chicken with bone ground in. Um, then they've got a chicken neck, they've got chicken liver, organic chicken liver and chicken heart. And then for their pureed vegetables today, they have got parsley, spinach and carrot. Then they've got some chia seeds sprinkled on top. And then each dog has got five drops of the root clean slate and one dropper full of the Ascent Nutrition Algae Oil for the DHA. Now the cats, they're all starving today. So we've got Mitzi eating on the cooker. She's got cooked chicken and then raw chicken liver, um, raw chicken heart. And again, she's got the Ascent Nutrition, the Clean Slate and the Chia Seeds. And then we've got Idris down here eating his because they've all come in before. Coco's just had hers. Where's Puss Puss gone? Yeah, Puss Puss is gone. Right. So we've got a good selection. So cats have got a good selection, dogs a good selection, and we're last.